the audition experience becomes not like that one moment where we, we might finally get it right or we might break in. I like to think of my auditions as it's a continuum. It's just this other dimension where I get the, I have the honor and the privilege to get to do what I love and get to work it out and get to play and get to practice and get to do what I say I love to do. So here it is. You say you love to act, Greg. You say you love the challenge. Great. You got a shitty script. You got a good script. You got a horrible reader. You got a bad reader. Bring it all on. Bring it all on, right? Before I jump into the q and I'm just moved to tell this one story. And sometimes I don't know why I'm always moved to tell it. But to me, it, it sums up what I think we want auditioning to really be about and what it can be about. And I'm, I'm giving away the end of this movie, but that's okay. It's still a great movie to see. It's an old movie. Some of you have seen it, some of you maybe not. But there's this movie um, called The Color of Money. It's one of Tom Cruise's early films. I think Paul Newman won his only Oscar for this film. It was a sequel to this movie that Paul Newman did when he was a young man called The Hustler. And it was one of Tom Cruise's first movies. And, and Paul Newman was you know, in his 60s, I think, when he did it. Um, it's a great movie, Martin Scorsese movie, The Color of Money. But the main character, Paul Newman, is a pool hustler. And when he was younger, he was, he was the best. And he loved the game. And he played it for the love of it. But he was cocky. And he started playing to win and, and playing to, you know, to, to use his power for, for, for ill. Uh, and he got all beat up and his hands broken and kind of left for nothing. And the color of money is years later. And now we get the impression he's kind of wealthy. He like has a liquor distributor business and he bets on young pool players. He finds some and trains them how to hustle and makes money off them. He's not playing for the love of the game anymore at all. He's just playing to win, to succeed, to make money. And he is, but he's dead inside. And he meets Tom Cruise, who's the best natural pool player he's ever seen. And so he gets drawn to him right away and he goes on the road with him and he teaches him to hustle. He teaches him to lose games on purpose, to not play for the love of the game, but to play to win, to just get the most out of winning that you can get and to use your God-given talent and the thing that you love to just win, to just get it right and win. And they eventually have this big falling out and Tom Cruise feels he's being totally manipulated and he, and he fuck you. And they have a, they go their separate ways. And, and, you know, Paul Newman's character just like spirals, but he goes on the road and starts going back to play to play, you know, and he gets beat. He gets hustled. It's actually Forrest Whitaker's first big film. And Forrest Whitaker has a great part where he plays a pool hustler. Great acting in this film, by the way. But uh, anyway, so, but we see Paul Newman on the road and, and, and falling in love with the game again and, and learning, getting his skills back. And he's playing all these shitty bars. And finally, there's the nine, the, at the end of the movie, of course, the climactic nine ball tournament in Atlantic City. And of course, in this movie, it ends up being at the very end, Tom Cruise and Paul Newman playing each other for, you know, the $100,000 prize money. It's a legitimate big tournament being televised or whatever. And it comes down to the two of them. They finally meet again in this tournament. And at the end, Tom Cruise has this impossible shot to win the game. And he almost makes the impossible shot, but doesn't make it. And Paul Newman wins. And he's like, yeah, and he wins. And he shakes hand with Tom Cruise. And he leaves the pool hall. And as they're, you know, they're the, the auditorium, and as they're walking out away from the cameras, Tom Cruise comes up to him and says, hey, good game, man. And he hands him a brown paper bag. And Paul Newman's like, what's this? And he's like, it's your share. And Paul Newman says, my share, what do you mean? Tom Cruise is like, oh, I, I lost on purpose. I bet $750,000 that you would beat me. So it's your share, it's your cut. Do you know what skill it took for me to like just miss that shot at the end? And Paul Newman realized he's been hustled, you know? He's like, son of a bitch. And he realizes he's corrupted this guy as well, I think. And he gives him the money back. He's like, I don't want your money. And Tom Cruise is like, what do you mean you don't want my money? What are, you, what are you talking about? He's like, I don't want your money. Well, what do you want? And Paul Newman's like, I want to go in the basement right now and I want to play. <laughs> this always moves me. This story just moves me. He's like, I want to play. But here's the deal. I want your best game. That's what I want. I want your best game. I want you to play me, but I want you to really play me for real. And Tom Cruise is like, but for how much money? What are we playing for? And Paul Newman's like, a million, two million, five bucks? I don't care. I just want your best game. And so they go in the basement and they're racking it up and they're chalking it up. And Paul Newman's like getting ready to break it. And Tom Cruise is saying, man, Eddie, this is ridiculous. Like, I'm better than you. I'm going to beat you. You can't win. And as Paul Newman's getting ready to break, he's like, it doesn't matter if you beat me. 
because I'll be there in Cincinnati. I'll be there in Chicago. I'm back. And he breaks and he's like, Ksh! and the movie ends with the balls breaking, right? He's playing to play. He's back to doing what he loves. It's an emotional day for Greg Sims, right? <laughs> he's back to doing what he does for the love of it. And it takes a lot of work to keep doing it for the love of it. But if you do this thing, I promise you, if you practice auditioning and practice acting and hone your craft for the love of it, it's going to bring a bunch of shit up and you're going to get, it's a struggle like we've talked about here today as well, but it's so worth it and you will be led. If you fall in love with the craft of acting for its own sake and learn how to serve the craft, I promise you, you will be led in your career and your life in ways you can't imagine. And it's not an easy thing to do, um, but it's so worth it. It's so worth it.